Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we'll get started here in just a second. We'll give people another minute or so to join and then we'll get going. All right, we'll go ahead and get started here. And as people join, we'll send out the recording at the end as well. Um, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us today on our February customer success webinar. Um, today, we're gonna to talk about uh, improving your execution in 2021. Throughout this, uh, you guys will be muted, but we do want this to be as interactive as possible. So even though you are muted, if you do have questions or uh, something to contribute, something to add to the conversation, please drop it in the, the chat and we'll cover questions at the end here as well. So this is part of our monthly webinar series. And like I said, today we're gonna cover improving your operations execution in 2022, but this is meant as sort of a way to refresh and clean up uh, your account in advance of 2022. So today, my name is Nick Hokinson, and I manage the customer success team here. I'm also joined by one of our customer success managers, Ana Gutierrez. She'll pop on at the end for questions. So like I mentioned, what we're gonna talk about today is sort of how to refresh your account, get it aligned with your goals for 2022, and Here's what we're gonna to cover today. So starting out, well, in order to know where you want to go and how you're gonna get there, we need to evaluate the, the past year's performance in Zenput. The second part we'll cover on what to focus on this year. Next, we'll cover actually how to execute on that in Zenput and how to refresh Zenput. Finally, we'll cover some Zenput updates and then we'll have time for Q&A at the end. So the first thing to think about and something to have in the back of your head as we're going through this today is think about what are your company goals for this year, right? Hopefully you have some, if not, please see me after class. Some of the goals for 22, right, could be around, you know, hiring and retaining staff, increasing your productivity, right? Hopefully it should be something around maintaining your, you know, already high standards of food quality, food safety, Maybe you guys are rolling out menu updates, uh, you're launching new products, you're trying to open new locations, right? There's gonna be a variety of goals. And the beauty of Zenput here is that we're flexible enough to help you with any of those goals, right? We're designed to be tailored to fit what it is that you are trying to do in Zenput, right? And what you're trying to do as a business. So keep those, whatever your goals are for 2022, keep those in the back of your mind as we go through the rest of this and think about how the rest of what we're gonna talk about can align to those and we can make, we can update Zenput for you so that it fits where it is that you wanna go this year. So like I mentioned at the beginning, in order to move forward, you need to know where you are. So part of that's gonna be a look back at the last year for your company, for your team in Zenput and figuring out sort of what is the state of affairs for you. So with that, I think there are a couple of things to look at, right? We kind of divided these into two different buckets. One are these sort of quantitative execution stats. So this is gonna be like the project completion 
excuse me, what you want to look at would be things like the project recap report, the project recap with failures, the number of active forms or active triggers, right? What's a task completion rate look like? And this is going to be more about sort of the, the quantity of execution that occurred for your team last year. The other side of that is going to be a little bit more qualitative. So this is going to be around looking at KPI reports for those most important audits. This will really help you identify what areas within the, your stores, within your restaurants to actually focus on. Another part is going to be a yes, no roll up report for those same important audits. And that's going to really help you to identify what areas are we most frequently missing and how can I adjust to address those? So with that, I do recommend trying to run this maybe for the, even the entire year. So just as a reminder, the project recap report looks at all the projects that were assigned and then tells you a completion rate by location and by team for your business. So looking at this, you can identify which, area, which projects are working, which aren't, which need adjustment. Similarly for the KPI report, this report focuses on one form in particular. So I'd recommend running this for whatever your brand standards audit is, whatever's that big form that's gonna, that informs you on location performance. And then this will actually show you the average score for each location, for each team. And if you have this form broken out into sections, you'll be able to see, okay, this year I need to focus a little bit more on food service, or I saw last year that our uh, exteriors needed more attention, right? So whatever the lowest score is on this can give you a point to build on for the future. Continuing with this sort of quantitative data, there are a few things to look at as far as forms and triggers. Forms, as I'm sure you're aware, are kind of the backbone of Zenput, right? Forms are where you decide what information it is that you want to gather from your stores, from your field teams. It's also how you tell them what work you want them to do. So one thing I would recommend looking at is how many active forms do you have, right? So how many forms do you have live now, and are you still using all of those? I mean, if a form hasn't been submitted in the last four to six months, it's probably worth either ar archiving or refreshing it. The other thing to look at here are, you know, checking the brand hub. It is 2022, and I know a lot of our brands that we support, like uh, Taco Bell, Domino's, uh, Hardee's and Carl's Jr., are coming out with new 2022 versions of the form. So to stay current, on that, check to make sure you're on the most recent version. You can check in the brand hub and add those new versions of the form if that applies to you. And we already talked about archiving inactive forms, so we'll skip over to triggers. Triggers are often called corrective actions in Zenput, right? And this gives you a way to know, uh, you know, when you're out doing an audit in the stores and you see that the parking lot is dirty, if you mark a question as no, that'll assign a task to the store to actually clean the parking lot, right? Because while it's great to know that the parking lot is dirty, what I really want is a clean parking lot. So I'd recommend just taking a look at all those triggers that you have, making sure that they're still relevant and making sure that the recipients of the tasks or the alerts match what is it, the reality for your business, right? I know people move on to new opportunities or we change the way that things work. So this is just something to keep an eye on to refresh for the new year. So once you've had a chance to look through those uh, KPI reports, your project recap reports, you have a good grasp on the forms, it's time to think about what enhancements need to be made. And before we dig into all the bullet points there, one thing that I think is really, really important to hit on here is to make sure that you solicit feedback from your field leaders and from your store users, right? Make sure that they have a, that they feel a sense of ownership 
for the work that they need to be doing, right? So if they have strong feedback or strong feelings about better ways to set up the forms, better ways to set up projects or triggers, right? Listen to that and make sure that you're able to strike a balance between, you know, you as an admin or as a as a leader getting the information that you need versus overburdening store store users or field leaders with, you know, low value work or low value questions. So make sure to get their feedback and incorporate that. A couple of things you might want to look at here. One would be to look at those projects that do have a low completion rate from that project recap report. A couple of things to think about here, right? First and foremost is, do you still need that project, right? Is that project still relevant to what you're doing this year? Is it relevant to what your goals are for the future in 2022? If the answer to that is yes, but it's still low, right? Maybe you wanna consider updating the timeframes or how often you're assigning that out, right? Maybe we need to give them a little bit more time or maybe because of staffing issues, the hours have changed at the locations. And so you need to update the timeframes for some of those. Another reason to consider for low task completion rate might be that the form itself is outdated, right? The work that you're asking them to do doesn't apply to them. Um, and I've seen this in a, in a few instances where forms just have a lot of low value questions. So if there's a lot of check boxes, um, if you have a yes, no question in there that says, did you turn on the lights today? In there, you know, an opening checklist that asks if you turn on the lights, that question is probably not providing any value to you as an admin, nor is it providing value to the store users because I suspect that they're not going to run a shift with the lights off. Right. Another thing to consider would be to make sure that the stores do have what they need as far as Wi-Fi, tablets, Right, if they're, um, on the, you know, if they need whatever else it is, then that's the reason for un, for low completion rates with their projects. So try to figure out a way to get them what it is that they need. Another thing to think about here, right, would be from those uh, more qualitative reports that we ran from the KPI, from the yes/no roll-up report, right. From those, you can find some new areas of focus, right? So if you wanna add those frequently failed questions, right? Maybe you add those to the top of those daily or weekly forms. So those are the first things, right? It provides a little extra emphasis on those to say, hey, this is what's most important to us this year. So let's, let's do that. Another way or another option is for those uh, items that have been missed in the KPI report or the yes, no roll-up report, Maybe it's worth adding triggers for those questions so that we can really emphasize that this is a point of focus this year. Right. Finally, another thing that I've seen work very well is to add a separate section in some of those opening, closing, brand standards audit forms around those strategic goals, right? So what are those top five things that we're focused on this year? Consider adding that as its own section. So it increases the emphasis on it. It's easier for you to report on it. And it tells people exactly what it is that needs to happen. All right. Next, I'm going to switch my screen here. And we're going to actually look at how to execute all this stuff. So I know that I talked a lot of theory and a lot of ideas. So let's actually dive into the platform here and look at what it's gonna to take to make some of these changes. Hopefully everybody's looking at his input screen and this is just our demo account. So this is our data that we use just as sort of a demonstration. All right, one thing that we talked about was editing projects. So if you want to edit the time frame of a project, click on projects, and go to recurring. Remember, recurring projects are the setup for what's going to make this happen every week, every day, every month, whatever recurrence is. If you found, let's say, for instance, that the daily opening checklist was an issue and that we don't need this anymore, if you come over here and you hover over on this far right side, you'll see these secret kebab menu that pops up. Click on that, 
and then just choose archive and the project will go away. On the other hand, if you decide that you still want this, but that you need to edit the time frame for it, instead of clicking archive, just click edit. It's supposed to take you to the edit screen, but my screen doesn't like my computer doesn't like screen sharing. So apologies for that. But that'll allow you to then edit the time frames and save it. The other part that we talked about was editing forms. So for some of these, if you need to make form edits, click on forms, come over here to whatever form it is that you want to edit, click on the little pencil icon, and then from here. <clears throat> you can change all the questions. Anything that's in this middle part here is a question that already exists on the form. And if you wanna change it, or if you wanna make, uh, add a new question, so excuse me, first to change it, click into this. And then on the right-hand side, you can click in here and you can start adding whatever new verbiage or whatever new words you want to add to that question. When you're done, just click publish and that changes live for everybody. We talked about adding a new section or in some new questions to the form. So if you wanted to do that, you have all these different question types on the left, drag and drop whatever you need in here. And we'll call this 2020. 2022 strategic focus. And now you have to choose what type of question you want. And this again, just drag and drop, drop it between questions three and five there, and bam, you have a new question. When you've got it all set up the way that you want, just click publish and you're all set. While we're in here, something else that we talked about was updating the triggers. So if you click on this triggers tab and you have triggers for this form, you'll see them here. One thing to think about, right, we wanna look at, you know, all right, are we assigning out a task? Is this just an alert? Do these alerts still make sense, right? So as you're scrolling through these, see if any of these make sense, right? We wanna make sure all these people are still with the business that uh, we're actually either assigning out tasks, that whatever the question is, right? So here's the product within standards. If they answer this no, we're assigning a photo task to the location manager. We need to make sure that a photo task actually makes sense for these, right? So I've seen some triggers out here where it says, you know, are employees in uniform or do employees have a good attitude, right? And they're assigning out follow-up tasks that ask them to take a picture of somebody's positive attitude. And that is very difficult. So you might wanna consider changing that to a basic task. So all you have to do is click into this. And then from here, you can update whatever you need to update. Finally, once you've made these changes and you've made these updates to your forums, to your projects, you need to make sure that you're actually reporting on them and able to follow up and track who's doing this, track performance on these new things. So you might need to adjust any of the project completion reports that you've set up. You might need to create new ones for new people to get everyone involved in actually completing the work that's being assigned out. So if you click on reports, save reports all, you can then see all of the reports that are going out today. If you decide that you wanna send a new project recap report to someone, maybe you want the district managers to receive that every day, you can set that up from here. Uh, and earlier in here, I showed you a GIF of that and we'll send that out, so I won't go over it now. Finally, once you've updated all of your reports, you've updated the triggers, you do have to let people know that these changes are coming, that we've listened to you, you've heard their feedback, 
and we're making changes. So I would recommend sending out an announcement about these new changes. Hey, for 2022, we're focusing on X, Y, and Z. So what we're gonna do this year is send out all these announcements for, oops, doesn't like me today. So send those out, send out a banner announcement for everyone, and then they know that those changes are coming and that'll help keep everybody on board with those changes. All right, let me switch back to the slide deck here. All right, we do have a couple of updates to talk about. So, big news for those of you who have Zenput labels is we'll be introducing uh, allergen labeling for Zenput. So, as a reminder, Zenput labels is our, our ingredient way for you to print out labels for everyone at the store. They, you know, instead of handwriting how often chicken expires, this ensures that prep food is labeled with the correct expiration dates. It's super fast, it's very easy, saves a bunch of time, and confirms that they're actually doing the prep work when they say that they are. And so as part of this, we've introduced allergen labels, right? So this is helping you ensure that any product with allergens is actually labeled correctly. This is to design to comply with you know, US and UK law around allergen labeling, right? It gives them a very gives employees a quick and easy way to print out these allergen and ingredient labels when they're doing this. Also allows you as an admin to centrally manage all of the allergens, right? So you don't have to send out a new Excel sheet when you roll out a new ingredient. You can just do this all in one place. And then bam, everyone in your entire organization is updated. So this should be coming out very soon and should be a big benefit to those of you with input labels. And if you're interested in this, please reach out to us and we'll get you in touch with the right people. Finally, an update on how we're gonna do webinars this year. So we're gonna try to provide a little bit more structure to our webinar series. Part of this involves using what we call the pillars of operations execution. So these pillars of operations execution are those uh, areas of operations that we know and we see our customers really thriving with them put in, right? So there are six we have food safety, operations, safety, marketing, human resources, and loss prevention. So what we're gonna do this year is focus, spend one webinar focusing on each one of these different pillars. And within that, we'll weave in new product updates, we'll weave in some change management things, we'll weave in other ideas into this, but kind of through a lens of what are those ways that you can expand your usage, your usage of Zenput? Right. You're already paying us, so you might as well be using us for everything that's possible, right? And this gives you a way to look at that, look, find out more about it, as well as receive important product updates. And that is all. Uh, Anna, do we have any, any questions come in through that? Yes, we do. We do have a couple of questions coming. So the first question is, what is the difference between archiving and deleting a project? Okay, so if you archive a project, that project will stop running, but the, all the tasks that are associated with it, the missed tasks, the completed tasks, will still count towards the task completion rate. If you delete that project, that removes all of the task completion rate history. So I would only delete a project if you've made it an error Right, so if you made a new project and you messed up the time for it, then I would delete it. If you're just changing it, if you're moving on and you want to, if you want and you want to keep the completion rate history for it, you should archive the project. Thank you, Nick. And another question that came in is, uh, what happens if I archive a form? Will my data get lost? It will not. If you archive a form. Uh, we will save the data for it. There's actually a little 
sneaky hidden section of the forms where you can flip between active and archived forms. So if you go to the forms tab in the web portal, uh, up in the top right, you'll see something that says active forms. If you flip that to archived forms, you'll still see all the data. You'll see all the submissions for those forms there. Awesome, thank you. And our next question here is, how can I boost my task completion rates? Oh, well, we have, there are many, many ways to do that, right? I think uh, we've done actually a whole webinar on that that you can find in our knowledge base. Um, I think kind of the easiest ways would be to first get feedback from your stores, from your field leaders and find out why it is that they're not doing it, right? And then address those. And it could be a number of things, right? It could be um, they don't have tablets or the Wi-Fi goes out. It could be that they just hate the form and they're not doing it. So we need to make changes to that. Or maybe the, the project is assigned out at a strange time and you need to update that. So I think the first step there is to dig in with your field leaders, with your store users and find out why and then address it that way. Awesome. So those were all the questions that we received today. So Nick, with that, I will turn it back over to you. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, if anyone else has any other questions, uh, please reach out through your support channels and we look forward to seeing you all next month. Thank you very much. Y'all have a great day.